Today we're in Redmond, Oregon for the Overland Expo Pacific Northwest and I'm going to be showing you the top five Tacomas. Let's get started. All right, we're here with Micah, known as Overland Under Budget. Make sure to check him out on Instagram. He also has a YouTube channel. Yeah. And this guy knows how to do it all. You ready to show us your Tacoma, <laughs> yeah, dude? let's check it out. Let's do it. Basics are 2001 Toyota Tacoma double cab. It's a TRD package, so it came with the rear locking diffs and 411 gears. Lucked out, got it a couple years ago when they were still pretty cheap. It was about 7,500 bucks. Two streets from my house. I literally skateboarded over, bought it from the original owner. Kind of like dream scenario. Totally stock, and then over the last two years, it's changed into what it is right now. And uh, yeah, I'll walk you through it. There's Have you done on. everything on this truck? Basically all the metal work, all the customization besides the front bumper is the only thing I haven't done. Up front, coastal off road, closed top winch bumper, which is cool because this is a self weld kit. So you can order this bumper at flat pack, they ship flat and you can weld it together. I actually got this bumper right before I got a welder. So this is like the one thing I didn't weld on the whole truck. What about your headlights? I was looking at your truck yeah. and since you do it all, did you retrofit those? I didn't actually, someone offered to retrofit those and I was like, yeah, one project I don't have to do myself. That's a huge upgrade. I, I suggest for, like people ask for first upgrades, headlights, huge, make a huge difference, especially on an old truck. So those are uh, projectors, which makes a big difference. Especially when they're old, I'd say like one of the first things I do is refresh the plastics, new headlights, makes it look a lot better. What do you have for suspension? Suspension is pretty basic. So stock uh, lower control arms, I have SPC upper control arms, which are adjustable. I do have a pair of uh, Kings up front, but they're hand-me-downs from a buddy's truck, like literally gave them to me, um, and they need rebuilt like insanely bad. So I think I'm gonna do Bilstein uh, 6112s. Actually, I saw um, Relentless Fabrication, Tacoma Beast video on the last uh, expo. He talked about those and that's <laughs> like literally yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to try those. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's up. Hopefully going to be up front soon. But other than that, it's like pretty basic. What about uh, wheels and tires? So wheels and tires, I've been running for almost uh, two and a half years. I've had the, the Toyota Steelys come as the spare. Um, I ran those up until like two weeks ago and I had BFG KO2s. Awesome setup, but um, recently just switched to Firestone. These are the Destination MT2, which was like my first um, mud train, which doesn't really make sense for how much road driving I do, but they, they just look so much better. Like I don't even care. Like, and then the wheels themselves are the new Nomad uh, convoy wheels negative 10 offset and that allowed me to get rid of the inch and a quarter spacer these are nine pounds per corner lighter than my last setup what about your sliders yeah so right after i got the bumper i got my first welder and i think within one week i put these uh weld on home built rock sliders <laughs> probably the worst welds on the build because they're literally some of my very first welds and i don't recommend welding them to your frame if you're a brand new welder <laughs> try something else first but yeah they've held up for over two years and honestly they're they're i designed them try to keep them i wanted something kind of sleek kind of slim i'm not a big fan of like the all the tubular one and i wanted to be able to stand on them really easy so i have kids so they're basically running boards that are uh eighth inch steel uh rock sliders a couple things inside. These are seats from a 2006 Mercedes ML 350, and they're fully powered. Really, oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> so a bit of an upgrade. And then I did a full custom dash, 10-inch um, touchscreen uh, on a bevel, on a on a ball, on a ball oh, head. Dude, that's yep. sick on a first gen. Yep, and it does CarPlay, Apple CarPlay, Maps, Spotify. And uh, yeah, that was a fun project. Headlights, being able to do Bluetooth music, have modern like navigation, uh, really keeps you from feeling like you're in like an old, like you're sacrificing when you're driving an old truck. Super comfortable on road trips, super easy to navigate big cities. So super simple platform for the fridge, which bolts into like the OEM seat bolt, so you can remove this. Um, but yeah, that's so where the fridge goes. So you don't have a rear seat delete all around? Nope, just, uh, just, so this is like a two in one, they fold down. Yeah. I just took the back of the one and took it out. It can still go right back in. And then this platform just goes in oh, place there. Yeah, yeah, so still, cause I have three kids. So when we go all together, this comes out and goes in the back. 
So for two years when I had the truck, I had it in stock uh, bed with a camper shell and a rack and it was, it was, I really liked the way it looked. And then it just got too small because I was sleeping in the back of it. Um, I was sleeping sideways and the original bed was five foot three. Uh, and the new bed is like six and a half long and like six feet wide. So it's way bigger <laughs> than it was before. And basically the entire build, everything I've done has been to just make it easier for me to camp in it, easier for me to go locally with my kids. Like anything that I do, like activity wise, I wanted this to just be kind of like an adventure rig for how I personally use it. And so I came up with this and it's basically a flatbed with a removable camper. And so we can uh, open it up here. And you built this yourself, right? Everything. Yeah, yeah. It's all uh, garage, garage fab with an angle grinder and uh, a welder, one step at a time. <laughs> but basically the setup here, little sunroof um, is, oh, wow. so I could be like on a road trip. It's, I kind of built it like how I use it. And what I ended up, what I realized is like, I'll go on these last minute trips. Like, hey, do you want to go tomorrow night? like somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Weather could be bad. I'd probably show up at like two in the morning. So I just wanted something like the camper shell that I could just drive, crawl in, and like have a really comfortable sleeping spot. So 90% of the time I sleep in it with it all closed up and I sleep in it like this. Um, and then the other side is like, once we open it up, you'll see like I camp with the whole family or something like that. So once it's all opened up, we've slept all five of us in here. And how long did it take you to build this? Um, I get that question all the time. So it's like, I started in February of last year, just like weekends and then all the free time I could manage with the kids and stuff like that. So uh, most of the time was spent thinking and like looking at it. Like I'd be out in the garage just trying to figure out how to do something and, and uh, the actual fabrication isn't quite as long, so. But. Awesome, man. So you guys sleep down here, right? Yeah. yeah. So if we're sleeping down here, just myself, I'll sleep with it like this, you know, so it's just like a single, like a bench. Does the roof open up? Yeah, the roof pops up. We could pop it in a second. And if the whole family's here, I'll pull this stuff out and this pad is folds out. And this is uh, almost a king size bed down wow. here. Yeah, so it's bigger than it looks. Um, so that's what I'll do like if, uh, if it's just me. And then if we have the whole family, I'll open this up over here. Nice. Dude. 2001. Yeah. And you guys sleep up there? Well, the kids sleep up here. So this is slightly narrow. I think it's uh, 48 inches by uh, just over seven feet. So it's, it's plenty long for one adult. Um, you could get two adults up there, but our kids sleep up there and then I sleep down here. All right, fellas, that about wraps it up for this build. Micah, thank yeah, you so dude. much, dude. Thank you. Make sure to check him out on Instagram and on YouTube, right? Yeah. How can they find you? Uh, Overland Under Budget is the Instagram, the YouTube, and the website, and the email. So nobody else had that, I guess. Awesome. <laughs> Go check him out. All right, guys, up next, we're here with Tim and his third gen Tacoma. Tim, how can our viewers find you on social media? Uh, just pretty much on Instagram, uh, Tim Yunez, and then underscore. Don't forget the underscore, guys. Make sure to check him out. We'll put a link down below. Dude, let's talk about your rig, man. What do you have up in the front? Yeah, so I got a CBI Baja aluminum bumper. For some lighting, I've got some Baja designs for winch, worn. I see uh, you have the Morimoto headlights. How do you Morimoto. like these? Are they Dude, bright? They're insane. Tim, what are you rocking for suspension, man? So in the front, I've got a mid-travel king setup. I'm doing Kainberg upper control arms. I mean, that's basically what's going on in the front. Wheels and tires, what size are these? Tires. These are 35, so 315, 70, uh, R17s. And then these are the fuel blocks. Do you know what the offset on these are by any chance? Um, I, your truck has a really nice stance. Well, I've got a, a spacer on the back. I got a Spider Tracks spacer on there, so okay. uh, 1.25. What about this uh, snorkel, dude? So that's a uptake by up top Overland. It just came out, I believe. I like it. You can like customize all kinds of stuff on there. I too. love how short it is up here. And... Yeah, it's got good aesthetics. Yeah. For the roof rack, what do we have? So we got a Prince U here. It's actually a full-size Prince U. We did a little bit of trimming, but we made it look like it came from CBI. For the rear suspension to hold up all this weight, what are you rocking? Yeah, so I actually have a 12-inch King Shock in the rear. We're doing Atlas uh, leaf springs, Bay Area Metal Fab leaf hangers, some Sumo springs, and that's basically it. Did you feel a difference when you moved, uh, when you upgraded to these shocks in the back? Oh yeah, you got so yeah. much down travel and it's just- the flex gets real. Yeah, exactly. I like to jump my truck. Yeah, I've heard so, that. <laughs> How do you like this camper? Let's go move on to the back. Yeah, so uh, I just picked this up a few weeks ago. GFC, they're in uh, Belgrade, Montana. 
and uh, we picked it up and we wrapped it right where they were installing it. So we kind of did it all in one shot and then we went straight to camping right after. So. It, and it opens up right and has a tent? Or? Yeah, so it opens up and you can crawl right through here. It's got these little sections here that you can take out and then uh, you can even put a ladder on the outside. So nice. Man. Yeah. It's What's cool. this uh, for? This is the um, first time I see this. Yeah, I just put this on. Uh, Bust to Beat George gave yeah. me this. Yeah. So he say uh, easy supplies. So when you're up here and you want to enclose yourself while you're you know about to go to sleep, you can reach down and just oh, grab it pull that up. instead of having to you know kind of reach down and, and close it. Yeah. Cool, man. So what do you have for your rear bumper? So this is a CBI a dual swing out steel. It's beefy. Well, Tim, dude, thank you so much for sharing your build with us. Absolutely. Really appreciate it, man. Have a nice show. You as well. Thanks. All right, guys, up next, we're here with Colin from Soundfast. Dude, this third gen is insane. I cannot wait for you guys to see the suspension in the back of this thing. How's it going, Colin? How are you, man? Doing well, doing well. How are you? Good show. So far, so good. Can't complain. What do you have up in the front for the bumper? Bumper is fully custom built by a guy named Gino, Solid Fabworks. He's here in Redmond, Oregon. Um, everything's CNC, um, so if you need one, it's click, 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 and build it for you. Vision X lighting up front. Uh, Warren Winch. All the controls are up here, so everything's tucked away, all custom built. If you look underneath, recovery points, skid plates. Full front end is of JD Fab. Pushes the front axle inch and a half forward. So let us fit 37s with a cab mount chop, pinching fender welds, that's it. And it works. I've launched it, my wife's launched it. It, it functions. What are you running for your air system? I see you have hoses coming off the sides. So I kind of did a mix of two things. Uptown Air is a company, their booth's actually over there, Overland uh, Vehicle Systems. It's this whip system. So throughout the whole vehicle, there's airlines ran. You set your pressure to 35 PSI, hit go, airs the tires up, airs the tires down, all at the same time. Super convenient, side of the road, drink a beer, let the thing do its thing. I've used the same system in a couple vehicles, and with this one, I actually did an ARB Lynx. Uh, ARB Lynx is a touchscreen mount, which I can show you here in a little bit. Uh, I can literally, with that, say set pressure, 12 PSI, boom, and it just starts airing down. Set pressure, 35 PSI, all airs up. Uh, that same ARB Lynx does all my light management for the fronts, for the ditch lights, uh, has rock lights, bed lights, all in one compact little container there. This just makes it nice. All you gotta do is carry these. Uh, Airbnb compressors built in, all done. It does have King 2.5s, air bumps in the front. Um, it's a you know tight, compact area, um, but it, it works. So what uh, wheels and tires are you rocking? These are Methods, and then 37 inch KO2s. Um, these do have the bead grip technology, so I can get down to eight or so PSI and feel comfortable with it. I didn't want to do bead locks. I still daily driver this thing, so I didn't want to have to deal with retorque and bead lock. And let's move on to the back and see what you got. In the back here, we're using the RSI Smart Cap. Super modular, comes in a box and you assemble it. Very durable, very positive locking systems. Way better than a fiberglass canopy. Obviously you got dogs, you can open up windows and whatnot. It's got a full 270 Rhino Rack awning, which is awesome. You can do sides on it as well when it's pouring down sideways. Rear suspension, sliders, same thing, all built by Gino at Solid Fabworks. Um, I wanted them tucked, didn't want a traditional. And underneath here, air bumps, King 2.5s, 14 inch, full three link custom system. Dude, let's dig deeper into the suspension system because it's it's nuts. So it's three linked, right? Three linked, uh, factory gas tank. Let's get in there. Factory gas door. Everything is, once again, it's tight. And it allows you to use your bed for whatever it is that you want. Yep, no holes cut in the bed. I don't have coilovers coming through here. Um, it's got strapped at 16 inches of travel in the back. Once again, my wife, and I have both launched this thing, uh, fully loaded camp gear off the dunes and it, it functions, it works. Trailing arms all custom built by him as well. Tucked enough that you can just still do some rock crawling. You don't have to you know, be careful with them. Trucks fully wrapped in a uh, Expel uh, paint protection film as well. So I can go down trails, drag up both sides. Doesn't really hurt it. Sick man, let's move yeah. on to the back. What do you have in the bed? So in the bed, this uh, bumper also built by Gino at Solid Fabworks. We literally finished this up at 5.30 on Thursday night, truck had to be in the booth at six. So it doesn't have the receiver, the lights, or the factory um, backup sensors in there, but it is all fab for that. 3D printed side caps, so you can still use your factory side caps. Factory blind spot detectors still work. As far as I know, it's one of the only ones in the market that does that. In here, we do custom stuff at our shop, so this is a custom built hatch, didn't want to bust your knees up. Uh, cutting board, nothing there. Magnets on there, so it's tight. Uh, ARB. Dometic, uh, got it all set up here. Does have the RSI table lock there, so you can bring your table. Dude, that's, I, this is something I really like here. Yeah, the and the table it, just gets stowed yep, away. Up and in. And Done. You don't even see it. 
Yep, and then that table is sturdy. It is sturdy. What about your tent? Tent is a actual prototype from CVT. It's a hard shell, super luxurious. For audio, I'm um, using the JL Audio C7 fronts three ways. So the sixes are in the factory location, the fours are in the factory dash location, and then I've built uh, on our laser at the shop, custom uh, sail panel, so we can have a three-way up front looking pretty factory. Behind the seat, uh, two JL Audio 10 TW3s in a custom box that we built, and all that's being ran uh, off a factory Toyota head unit, uh, factory eight inch with CarPlay, navigation, everything, and then it goes into the VX series amp amplifiers, fully tuned with what's called the Max, which is an amazing thing. I urge someone to go to a jail dealer, sit in a car that's been tuned by the Max, it will blow you away. This thing rocks. I mean, any kind of music you throw at it, this thing rocks. All right, guys, that's Colin for you guys. Make sure to go check him out. Colin, thank you so much, man. Of course, man. Enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. On to the next one. All right, and next is Vale from GeoScout Adventures. We've been wanting to hang out for the longest time and we were able to make it happen. Originally, I was gonna go up and hang out with him in Canada and then the whole COVID thing happened and we had to cancel that for the longest time. How's it going, my man? Yeah, we got a new truck here. That's my 2019 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. It's been built by Crave Automotive up in Calgary, Alberta. What do you have for the front bumper? Yeah, I got a C4 fabrication front bumper. These guys are awesome, reach out to them and uh, really nice to work with. We sell a lot of their bumpers throughout the shop and I absolutely love the style. I love the flat front face on here. I just think that it just really suits the style of the truck and uh, you know, gives that unique aggressive look. What did you decide to go with for lights? All the lights on the truck are Baja designs, Onyx 6 up top, Squadron, sports ditch lights, and then I also have rock lights throughout the truck. I think there's 15 on the truck. A little overkill, but I do love them for camping. And then what about your headlights, man? How do you like those? I love them. These are the Morimoto headlights. I have them in all amber. I just think it just really adds to that, the look of the truck. I, my old truck had like the amber halos, and I just had to have the same thing. I see you have Dirt King lower control arms. Is that long travel or just standard? These are the mid travel, so standard travel uh, lower control arms. Um, quite honestly, it's really easy to think that they're just bling, but man, they add performance. When I go around corners, it really tighten up the whole truck. Uh, with no sway bars, it just dials the truck in and really feels nice. And what suspension are you running? Uh, Elka suspension. So I'm actually here with the Elka booth and they're just built for harsher weather and they just withstand uh, our climate that we see up in Canada. What did you decide to do for wheels and tires? For wheels and tires, I have SES F5, minus 38, 17 by nine wheels. Um, and then for tires, I have them in the Yokohama Geolander MTG003 in 35, 12, 50, 17. I love them. Uh, I actually run these all year round. Uh, we custom sipe and stud them in the winter and so they're just they're my favorite tire. All right Vale can you show me what's underneath the hood? I know you have a goodie in there. Sure thing man. So we got a Magnuson supercharger. Um, honestly love it. It just on a heavy truck like this it really adds the performance that I need. Um, it pulls up the hills. I was driving up here with another guy and he just was not able to keep up on the on the hills with these heavy trucks so absolutely love the Magnuson. A couple other goodies, you know, we got a compressor in the back corner. We got a Switch Pros unit. I got the Force 12, because um, why not? And then I actually just changed out the, the front battery. I put a Odyssey 3478 in there just to get the weight off this front fender. I found that 80 pound battery in there is just too much. And then I actually have two batteries behind the back seats for my triple battery setup. What do you have for roof rack? For roof rack, I've got a Front Runner Slimline 2. Up there, I've got Pelican vault boxes and I've got a Treeline Ponderosa Plus rooftop tent. What about uh, sliders and skid plates? Yeah, sliders, skid plates, all C4 stuff. I really like to have that uniform look. And then for the skid plates, all steel because I uh, like to bash off the rocks. What suspension do you have in the back to hold up all that weight? Yeah, so in the rear we got matching Elka suspension and then we have Dobinson's 113R leaf springs. And when you've got this much weight in the truck, it just really helps keep that rake, keeps that stance stance going. Nobody wants to have an ass down. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I also have Timberin U-Bolt flip kit in there. Uh, you know, the Timberin bumps really help when you are hitting the trails pretty hard. Tell me what you got back here, it looks sweet. Yeah, so I have a uh, Lear 100XR canopy. In the back here, I have a very unique drawer system, the Journey Systems kitchen setup. I do have our own Crave branded bed stiffness also to hold everything kind of nice and tight. Airb fridge with an alley cab slide. My favorite part is this guy right here. Big kitchen drawer pull out with a 
show pull out as well. So yeah, pretty cool. You know, it's so easy to just get set up. Hundred percent. Yeah, super easy just to kind of get it all set up and ready to go. Bill, what what do you have for your rear bumper? Uh, I got a C4 Designs single swing out high clearance rear bumper. I'll be honest, when I first ordered this, I was really bummed out that there was no dual swing out option available at the time. And after using it, after seeing the latch design and just the ease of using this uh, this rear bumper, I love it. I don't even think I want a dual swing out anymore. Uh, and these guys make phenomenal products. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for Ville's uh, walk around. Ville, thank you so much for having me, man. Really looking forward to going up in Canada and hanging out with you guys. Thanks, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, we got some really cool trucks up there. Awesome, man. I can't wait. Thank you so much. Have a nice show. Awesome, dude. Up next, we're here with Dirt Lifestyle. Really excited to meet you, man. Dude, you too, brother. So happy to know that you were here and excited to get you on the top five Tacomas here at the Expo. I'm honored. You ready to do the walk around? Let's do it. So what do you have up for the front bumper? I built this. It's an inch and three quarter tube. I kind of had to throw it together quick because I wanted this to be able to go to King of the Hammers. And uh, I had a week to toss this, build this bumper, build this, uh, the rear bumper at the time, and then build the sliders. And so I'm pretty quick with tube and I just slapped it all together. I like the way it looks but I'm a fabricator, nothing's ever finished. Do you have a winch up in the front as well? I do, yep, Xeon 10S, outstanding winch. This thing, I pulled it off another truck that I had before. It's probably got 90, 100 pulls on it. Never an issue, it's such a good winch. Now I see that your tires are massive. Are they 40 inch tires? 38s. 38. 38, so the mile stars measure a little big, I measured them, and my 39 KO2s on my wife's truck are about the same as these. They both are like a 38 and three quarter. Dude, and how did you make that happen with a Tacoma? Well, the rear is completely custom, so I built the suspension from scratch. The front, I use the Marlin Crawler RCLT, and it slides where the wheels mount forward about two inches away from the body. So you'll notice that I haven't even done like a relocation or chop of the body mounts at all, because it pushed it forward enough. I asked for their widest kit, which is now gonna be like their big kit, which is uh, plus 3.5. And then I got wheels that sucked it in nice and tight, so I had a really tight scrub radius and then made it to where I can steer nice and easy, it's easier on components, and I'm able to fit them in not a very big wheel well. And what do you have for suspension like up in the front? Oh, uh, these are Bilstein's. Bilstein 8112s. They're not exactly the right length. Um, it's temporarily permanent, as I like to say. So they're, uh, I, sh I need like between an eight and a 10 inch throw coilover in the front to set it where I want it. So it's an eight inch, a, a Bilstein 8112 with a little bit of a spacer in order to make it to where everything's the right out, like maximum length and minimum length. What tires and wheel setup did you decide to go with? I know you mentioned the tire size, but uh, what brand is it? Yeah, so the tire is Milestar Patagonia. Um, this is my second set. These are the brand new ones that they just came out with. Uh, it's the MT-02, same tread pattern and whatnot, but they changed the carcass to make it like way, way durable. Um, so far, these have been really good in snow and in rocks, which are my two favorite things. And they're on a, a method bead grip wheel. and. I have built a lot of off-road trucks. I'm a huge fan of bead locks. It's like such a crucial component to me, but these are amazing. And so I've been telling everybody, um, the bead grip's amazing because you can go like almost flat and they still won't lose a bead because around the inside of the wheel is like serrated to keep the, the bead from walking at low pressures. What are you rocking for the fiberglass? Fiberglass is from McNeil Racing. I had to really open up the inside of everything before I could stuff a 38 in there but it, they ended up working pretty damn good, actually. What do you have for the roof rack? The roof rack is from a company called Sherpa Equipment. I love this style roof rack. I have come from a tube background, so all the roof racks I've built personally have all been tube-based. And so to see something like this that's like laser cut with all the flat edges is very attractive. Since you do a lot of rock crawling, I see you have uh, sliders. Did you make these yourself? Yes, this is version 2.0. It's a little bit thicker wall on the, the outer tube, so it's inch and three quarter by 120 wall. It's holding up the rocks way better, but I don't like this little kick out in the back. So the next version, version 3.0, is gonna go smooth back to the tire. Now let's go to the back, the most exciting part for me on this truck. It doesn't look like a Tacoma anymore, and I know you completely modified the rear end of this truck. What did you do? So I worked with Boeing Customs. Um, we wanted to build something truly one of a kind. So what I did is I chopped 18 inches out of the frame, made my own cross member, and then uh, I went to uh, Boeing Customs in Colorado and we attached a, uh, uh, this bed to it. So the bed is 280 pounds, because it's all aluminum, nice and light. The tent from iCamper is only 125. So overall, it drives exactly like a stock truck, but I have all the extra clearance back here 
um, from just what we decided to put together. Uh, this is something that Brent and I went back and forth with. So Brent actually put this together uh, based on an idea that I had on my one ton Dodge where I put a rooftop tent on a rack and it lifts up exactly the same way. So like, dude, let's do the same thing. We can take the tent and we can make it super low so it's still gonna wheel right. And it brings that center of gravity down nice and low. And then it's basically like a tonneau cover that kind of like hides this big open void on the inside. Now let's talk rear suspension and let's get down there. This is, this is nuts. I did a three link back here. I utilized the factory mounting points for the leaf springs because they're hidden really nice and high away from rocks. It's not the best suspension geometry, but it's very comfortable ride. Uh, I'm gonna change it up. I always like to experiment. I can't leave well enough alone. So I've got a new rear end coming for this. It's gonna be a four nine inch base rear end. And when I get that new rear end, I'm gonna do a, uh, a it's gonna be a, a Watts Link style. That, you'll just have to watch. These are Bill Stein, they're 12 inch travel coilovers, uh, 2.5s I believe. All right guys, that about wraps it up for Nate's build. Nate, so awesome to meet you, man. I've been wanting to meet you for the longest time. And now that we've met, guys, something might down. might just happen where we go and shoot Nate going crazy with his rig, because we gotta get you out there in the 100%. wild. 100%. <laughs>